I want to talk with you now about philosophy and science in the 17th century. Even though each of the men that we're going to talk about had a different contribution in a different um, area for the most part, um, some of these guys were philosophers, uh, Galileo, a scientist. Um, they all believed in gathering empirical data to prove a hypothesis. All of their work was founded on the beliefs of empiricism and inductive thinking. They all took a bottom-up approach. They wanted people to pr prove things to them, and they wanted to prove things to others through an accumulation of evidence to reach a conclusion. These guys took nothing for granted, and they searched for objective truth. And the big names we're going to look at are Galileo, Galilee, Rene Descartes, Thomas Hobbes, and John Locke. Also, it's important to note that during this period, the telescope, microscope, barometer, and thermometer were all invented. And this encouraged that empirical scientific study. I want to start with Descartes. Descartes was French, and he is considered to be the father of modern philosophy. He truly believed in the rational power of humans. And Descartes established a certain criteria for defining reality. Basically, he tore everything down and then put it back together. His criteria began with encouraging people and himself to not believe what cannot be proved. Everyone was to doubt their held beliefs and then attempt to prove them. The bottom line would be that people would then reconstruct their belief system on what they could or could not prove. So you can see how he wanted to tear everything down experiment and try to prove everything and then reassemble a belief system based on only what could be proved. He actually believed in a divine being because someone could imagine it. And that was proof for him. And he came up with the famous phrase, I think, therefore I am. In other words, because he thought, then he could see the fact that he actually existed. Hobbes was English. He wrote a very famous piece called the Leviathan um, during England's civil wars. Hobbes believed that if it was not material, it was not real. In other words, if you couldn't touch it, see it, taste it, smell it, if it didn't have a material existence, it wasn't real. His famous work, the Leviathan, was a work of political philosophy. And in the Leviathan, Hobbes denies the existence of a divinely established moral code. In other words, there was no universal sense of what was right and what was wrong. Religion for Hobbes was irrelevant, and so um, the governments must check people's impulses or there will be anarchy. He believed that laws are created, therefore, to protect people from themselves. And this is the idea of the social contract. He believed that people must give up certain liberties in order to protect themselves and in order to be safe. This thinking was scandalous. He, um, in essence, in the time of, civil, of the English Civil Wars, when people were trying to break away from the monarchy and establish a representative form of government, Hobbes was saying just the opposite. He was saying we need a strong central government. Since there are no divinely established moral codes, we need a strong central government to keep anarchy from happening, to impose and to manage this social contract. People in an absolute monarchy would have their impulses checked and governed by the monarch and therefore would be much safer. So during a time of civil war, when de people who advocated democracy were stepping up, this was pretty scandalous. Now there was also an Englishman, another Englishman named John Locke. He was a physician, but he wrote a piece called An Essay Concerning Human Understanding. 
In this essay, he believed that there were no innate ideas, no innate sin, and that all ideas, beliefs, behaviors come from our experiences. If you've taken human growth or development or psychology, you've probably studied the nature-nurture debate. Locke started this debate. He said people are not born a certain way, but they become a certain way depending upon their environment. Locke also wrote a very important political treatise called Two Treatises of Government, and it greatly influenced the revolutions, the French and the American revolutions of the 18th century, and the revolutionary thought. He is considered to be the father of the philosophical and political tradition of the West, especially America. And I want to show you this really quickly, and you can kind of see the differences between these two political philosophies. Thomas Hobbes, on the one hand, believed that humans are naturally cruel, greedy, and selfish. Well, Locke, just the opposite, believed that people are naturally reasonable, moral, and good, and it's only the environment that makes them bad and corrupts them. Thomas Hobbes believed that to escape this brutish life, people entered into a social contract, and that only a powerful central government could ensure an orderly society, believed in only an absolute monarchy that could keep the society completely orderly. Locke, because he believed people were born naturally good, moral, and reasonable, that humans have a right, a natural right, to life, liberty, and property. Those terms should sound really familiar. And as we talk about the Declaration of Independence and the um, French Revolution document, you will see those ideas of life, liberty, property, the pursuit of happiness echoed. So Locke says people form governments to protect those natural rights and that the best government was one with limited power. And if a government violates people's natural rights, people have the right to overthrow the government. So you can see that Thomas Hobbes and John Locke had very different political philosophies. And America was founded on the ideas and the beliefs of John Locke, that people do have natural rights and that the government exists only to help ensure those natural rights. And if at any point the government overreaches, the people can overthrow the government. Hobbes would have been totally freaked out by that. The last person I want to mention in these great philosophers and scientists is a man named Galileo, who hopefully you guys have heard of before. Galileo was from Italy, and he was the founder of modern physics. He began his studies in medicine, but switched pretty quickly to math. He built the first telescope in 1609, and with it he proved Copernicus was correct. He, he proved that the Earth revolved around the Sun, rather than the, or the, rather than the other way around. He was censured by the Pope, opposed by the Church. Um, he was bound to house arrest as the church filed charges of heresy, but there he continued to work. His heresy trial um, occurred in 1633. Galileo began to ask questions of not why, but what and how. In other words, how did blank happen? What caused blank to happen? And you'll see the next item down in Blackboard is a folder all about Galileo and about his um, proving that the earth revolved around the sun and the church's reaction to that.